Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, <laughs> depending where you are. Um, we will we will start the call um, shortly. We'll just give it a couple more minutes to to allow a few more people to join. I'll just post a reminder on Slack as well. Good morning, afternoon, evening. Good morning. How are you today? Not too bad, how about you? I am good. Hi, Shane. Hi, Raphael as well. Hi, Shane. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We'll just give it one more minute. Sorry to uh, keep you waiting, Shiran. Uh, no problem. Hey, Luis. All right, I think I think we have a quorum. Um, so the first item on today's agenda um, is uh, the um, presentation from the uh, Chabo or Chubao, is, is that the right pronunciation of FES um, project, um, which is currently um, uh, a member of the CNCF as a sandbox project and they've made some amazing progress uh, over the last year um, and um, have built uh, the community um, and are looking now to move into incubation stage. So we look forward to, uh, we look forward to their presentation. Okay, thanks, Alex. Over to you. Uh, uh, shall I uh, share my desktop? Uh, absolutely. Uh, okay. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, evening. Okay. Um, so uh, this is Shuoran speaking. Uh, I'm the co-maintainer of uh Trubo FS. Uh, so today I'm going to uh present on behalf of Trubo FS, uh, hoping to move it from uh sandbox to incubation. Uh, can you see my desktop? Yep. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, Trooper IRS, uh, I'm going to brief some backgrounds uh, of Trooper IRS. Trooper IRS is a, a cloud-native distributed uh, storage platform uh, designed, to, uh, designed for containerized applications uh, running in large-scale container platforms, uh, such as Kubernetes. Uh, as you may recall that uh, TrueFS was uh, uh, formerly described as a uh, distributed file system uh, when it was first open sourced and uh, presented to the storage SIG uh, when trying to uh, trying to uh, go get into uh, as a sandbox project. Uh, but since uh, version uh, 2.0, we have a feature added to the project, which is uh, S3 compatible interface, uh, 
uh, so the using scenario uh, expands uh, tremendously uh, after that. And uh, it is a case in real uh, production. Uh, it is uh, already beyond uh, the scope of cell system. So we prefer to call it a distributed uh, storage platform uh, right now. Uh, and uh, then uh, what makes it so special for uh, cloud native applications? Uh, here are some challenges we summarized uh, based on our experience serving uh, applications running in a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, first of all, uh, we find that uh, there are a lot of customers uh, sharing the same uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster, uh, which means uh, in terms of storage uh, provider, uh, we have to uh, we, we have to have the ability to provide uh, different volumes uh, in the purpose of uh, data isolation. Um, it is impossible for us to uh, deploy uh, different cluster, true IFS clusters for each customer. So uh, multi-tenancy is a uh, necessary feature uh, for true IFS. And then, um, I think storage usage and uh, throughput uh, is hard for a single uh, customer is hard to predict uh, because uh, I think the main uh, advantage for cloud native applications is that uh, it is uh, highly scalable and uh, it is very common uh, that uh, the storage usage and uh, throughput uh, growth as business growth. Uh, so, uh, I, so uh, this is a, a requirement for a cloud native storage platform as well. And uh, since we have a lot of customers, uh, the file sizes are diverse, uh, ranging from uh, kilobytes to terabytes, uh, which means we have to support uh, both. Uh, large and small files. Uh, and, and I think uh, it is a, a big challenge to support small files uh, very well for distributed storage uh, system. And also uh, we have to support uh, sequential and random read-write patterns uh, for, for different uh, applications. Uh, and uh, then uh, we find that the applications uh, running in the same Kubernetes cl uh, cluster uh, are sometimes uh, connected to each other. So it is better to uh, for the data to be uh, can be shared uh, by upstream and downstream users. And uh, uh, it is better to provide a different uh, your interfaces uh, for different customers. Uh, so these are the challenges uh, we take in, took into account from the very beginning when designing a true IFS project. Uh, to solve th those challenges, uh, there are some key features uh, listed here uh, of true IFS. Um, for example, uh, optimized resource utilization, uh, multi-tenancy, uh, elasticity, and scalability for uh, metadata and data. Uh, I, I think it is very common for uh, data to be uh, scalable, but uh, uh, it is a big challenge for uh, metadata to be uh, scalable. And uh, we also can serve large amount of clients in a single uh, cluster simultaneously. Uh, this means that there is no uh, theoretical limit for the number of uh, uh, containerized applications uh, using the same TrueBFS cluster. Okay. Um, and also TrueBFS is optimized for uh, both large and small files. And it has uh, converged, uh, right now it has converged 
file system and S3 compatible interfaces. And uh, here is the timeline uh, for Trooper FS. Uh, it is used in production at uh, gd.com uh, first uh, in June 2019, uh, 2018. And uh, it was open sourced uh, in March 2019. Uh, we released uh, version 1.0 in April 2019 uh, and was uh, presented to uh, the storage SIG uh, in June 2019. Uh, the, the, the industrial paper based on TrueFS project was published uh, in SIGMOD 19 uh, in July. Uh, in order to uh, integrate with more uh, cloud native ecosystem, we uh, developed uh, TrueFS GSI plugin and uh, TrueFS help. And uh, they are released and uh, used in production right now. Uh, in December 2019, uh, TrueFS joined uh, as a sandbox project. Then uh, in April 2020, we released uh, version 2.0. Uh, which supports S3 uh, compatible interface. Uh, uh, also, there are several uh, external uh, users uh, listed on GitHub. Uh, the most recent uh, external user uh, is Meizu, uh, which is a uh, consumer electronic company in China. Uh, and I'm going to cover uh, the uh, using scenario uh, of different companies uh, in the later slides. And in August uh, 2020, OPPO joined as a key contributing company. Uh, as we know that uh, such projects, uh, such uh, storage projects require um, constant investment for someone to be able to uh, make uh, key contributions or key improvements uh, to the project. So OPPO has established a development uh, team. And uh, right now, uh, JD.com and uh, OPPO are collaboratively uh, leading the project right now. Uh, then we have a plan to uh, for the next release to improve their stability. And we are trying to uh, to support more uh, big data applications uh, in the future. Um, and here is a high level architecture uh, for Trooper FS. Uh, as, as you can see from the diagram, there are several components uh, forming the whole uh, system, uh, which is a resource manager uh, to uh, manage the the whole resource of the cluster and the uh, volumes. And uh, data, data subsystem is uh, the place where uh, file contents are, uh, are actually stored. And the metadata subsystem is where uh, file metadata uh, is stored. Uh, comparing to a local file system, a resource manager is uh, where a file system metadata is uh, stored and the uh, metadata is where a uh, file metadata is stored. Okay, uh, and uh, to take uh, the request from uh, application and users um, and resolve them into a uh, meta and data request, we have fields client and uh, object node. Uh, providing both file system interface and S3 compatible uh, interface, respectively. Okay, um, here's a, a detailed uh, architecture of TrueFS or uh, what a TrueFS cluster looks like. Um, hey, just just a yeah. just a quick question. Um, mm -hmm. So so the, the the primary way of accessing 
um, a volume is through um, a fused clients, therefore? Uh, yes, a uh, client uh, is, uh, is providing a file system interface. Uh, uh, using, gotcha. yeah. Okay, uh, here's what a uh, true wireless cluster looks like. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to uh, uh, going to uh, dive into the technical details of this diagram, uh, but I think there's some uh, key points uh, worth mentioning. Uh, first of all, uh, is that the metadata uh, is highly scalable. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, data data, uh, data subsystem is uh, it is very common for data uh, subsystem to be scalable, but uh, for metadata, um, it requires a design a careful design thoughts uh, for metadata to be very scalable, and uh, it is uh, documented in in our uh, industry paper uh, in SIG mode. Uh, second, uh, second of all is that um, as you can see there's only one potential uh, bottleneck uh, in the diagram which is the resource manager uh, but we can deploy a manager proxy uh, before a uh, resource manager uh, so we eliminate uh, bottlenecks as much as possible and thirdly just just a quick question on that so that mm -hmm. that manager proxy is is kind of like a load balance a load balancer for the resource manager uh actually we use uh, nginx as a manager proxy yeah it, right. it, it takes just a uh, uh deal with uh, the read requests because that's uh i would say uh, that's uh where the bottlenecks that's a high frequent a request uh, to resource manager. So they're, they're caching service? Uh, yes, they're, they're caching the, uh, the, the reader request uh, results. Excellent, thank you. And uh, thirdly, um, where am I? Oh, uh, as you can see that uh, uh, one client's uh, 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 the control plane and the uh, data plane uh, separated, uh, which means that the, the normal read or write process does not go through a uh, resource manager or manager proxy. Uh, it only goes through a uh, meta node and data node. And uh, last but not the least, um, this, this architecture can uh, withstand a high uh, traffic peak, uh, which is very useful during um, commercial promotion festivals. Okay. So, it, just just sort of uh, just to clarify and, and maybe to also make it clear to others. So so effectively, um, the data part for any files or any objects. Um, goes to the data nodes and it's partitioned and sharded mm -hmm. and yeah. the the attributes of a file and things like a directory structure and and things like that um, go to the to the meta node correct mm -hmm. yeah correct does does the meta node also contain um, um, information on the layouts of of the data partition uh, actually, uh, yeah, yes, uh, uh, no, no, not the data partition. Uh, as you can see, a uh, meta partition is uh, indexed through an uh, inode number range. Uh, so, uh, and uh, the, the meta data uh, consists of uh, where the actual data uh, is stored. Right. Well, okay. I, I mean, uh, clients uh, get the uh, partition view, and uh, uh, in order to access a single file, um, first it can get uh, metadata from a meta node, and uh, it, what it gets is a data partition ID, 
and through this data partition ID, it can uh, uh, the request can be routed to uh, the actual data node. Yeah, so, so actually it's the client uh, that has the uh, data partition view. Yeah. Understood, understood. Yeah, in fact, I have a question regarding. Mm -hmm. uh, so you say that is uh, basically the the metadata you have trying to find the data based on the inode, which is um, one per file. So does that means that um, you have to have the like the data node which can be big enough to fill in like one five one file. So um, every file is, the file that cannot be shared across different uh data node or is uh, it can be sharded uh i'm sorry uh what one one fell it, uh, uh, so my question is is this one is one file have to be like located in the one single data node or it can be like sharded across uh, different data nodes uh, it can be sharded uh to different data nodes uh because the uh the minimum uh Data node uh, storage uh, unit is extent, and uh, uh, a large file, for example, a large file can uh, can consist of uh, several extents, and uh, this extents can be uh, sharded uh, and can be uh, distributed uh, through uh, data partitions. And uh, for small files, um, maybe a one extent can consist of uh, uh, several files. So uh, that's why uh, we, uh, as I said, uh, as I said uh, TrueFS is optimized for small files because small files are aggregated to a single extent. And so uh, for small files, uh, several uh, files can be aggregated to a single extent. For large files, um, one large file can consist of uh, several extents. And that's that. Uh, Extents can be uh, distributed uh, through data partitions. Okay, so um, okay. so what's the algorithm or strategy we use to distribute or decide that well to store those uh, files, or is that many? Um, because as you know, Seth, they have uh, like consistent hashing and stuff. But um, so what uh, about uh, what do we have here? Uh, actually, a uh, data partition uh, can be marked as uh, writable or uh, read only. Uh, so the client will uh, pick uh, one uh, writable data partition and uh, write uh, the actual data to uh, to a specific uh, data partition and update the meta node, uh, update the metadata. Okay, so so the information is stored in the metadata node associated with the I node, so you can find out where the file is, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, we talked about the technical details, and here's the community growth. Uh, TrueFS was open sourced uh, since March uh, 2019, and uh, uh, it, it, is, it was enrolled as a sandbox project uh, in December 2019. Uh, so this, this uh, data uh, statistics are extracted from uh, devstats.cncf.io. Uh, the data is before versus since joining sandbox. Uh, before uh, joining sandbox, uh, the duration is uh, nearly a nine month. And uh, uh, since joining sandbox, uh, it's about um, 14 or 15 months. Uh, these uh, statistics are from a uh, development uh, perspective. As you can see, uh, commits uh, increased uh, 300%, code committers uh, are doubled, and uh, we have a boost for uh, pull requests. And uh, I think the most important thing uh, here is that uh, now we have two, uh, two Companies uh, constantly in, uh, in, invest uh, uh, constantly uh, invest on this project. Uh, 
uh, which is JD.com and OPPO. Uh, we have two uh, development teams uh, making key uh, improvements to the projects. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, such uh, storage projects uh, have a, has a high barrier for contributing uh, key features. So uh, we are now having uh, two teams. And uh, as you can see from the commits that uh, more and more key uh, commits are from OPPO uh, team as well as uh, JT.com. Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, brief some uh, user uh, adoptions uh, from different companies. Uh, first of all, of course, uh, JZ.com is the top e-commerce company in China, uh, and it uh, still has the largest uh, TripleFS cluster in production. Uh, it, it served as the default storage uh, for uh, containerized applications uh, deployed in Kubernetes cluster. Uh, there is no local uh, local storage uh, provided uh, for containerized applications, just only uh, only TripleFS, and uh, it has uh, been supporting more than uh, one hundred internal business customers uh, at JD.com. And then OPPO. Um, th there are several uh, using scenarios uh, in OPPO right now. Uh, some of them are already in production and some are under development. For example, uh, TripleFS served as the backend uh, storage in the AI platform. Uh, well, this, this one is uh, in production. And we are trying to um, expand the using scenario uh, for TripleFS, uh, which uh, is hope, uh, hoping to support more uh, big data applications. Uh, for example, uh, we are trying to use uh, TripleFS as the backend uh, storage in a data lake, uh, data lake uh, architecture. And uh, this was uh, this, this is under development. And also, uh, we are trying to use it as the remote Spark Shuffle uh, plugin uh, storage. And this is also uh, under development. And when the uh, and when this uh, usage are in production, uh, we plan to uh, open source uh, in, in, in uh, on GitHub. And also, uh, Meizu, uh, it is a con consumer electronics company uh, in China. Uh, they don't have a development team, but uh, uh, drivers are used uh, in production uh, in Meizu. Uh, there are several uh, business uh, customers uh, use drivers as backend uh, storage, uh, such as uh, AD algorithm platform and uh, database uh, push service risk control and cloud backup. Can I can I um can I ask mm -hmm. just a um a, a small question mm -hmm. on some of these use cases? Um, it, are they are they therefore um kind of geared towards um read intensive um workloads where the client can do sort of lots of caching? Um, or or are they or, or are some of the workloads also um, um, sort of geared towards um, lots of write activity um, and, and the reason why I'm asking this is because you know there are some obvious um, gotchas when you're doing intensive writes with with fuse file systems for example and I, I kind of wondered if you had done anything, if, if there was anything um, specific in the project to kind of deal with that? Well, uh, actually, uh, we, we have to find a balance point uh, between uh, like POSIX file system semantics 
and uh, the performance. Uh, because uh, mm -hmm. as we all know that uh, policy expel system semantics are not very suitable for um, for distributed storage. So we have to make some compromise uh, about the POSIX semantics uh, to, uh, to balance uh, the performance. Uh, but the, the principle is that uh, we had to fulfill uh, the, the application requirements uh, for such uh, semantics uh, compromisation, uh, like uh, one to cache the data and one not to cache the data. Uh, we had to do some balance. And the principle is that we have to fulfill applications uh, requirements. So as long as uh, we can support uh, the customer applications, uh, we, are, uh, we, we can uh, re re release uh, the POSIX entity. So there's a, yeah, there's a balance point uh, between uh, semantics and performance. Okay, understood. Um, Rob Esker wrote a uh, question in the chat, um, asking if you would you you would um, be able to um, maybe cover what motivated Oppo and JD.com to undertake the development of 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 uh, GeoFS, um versus um, perhaps you know using other other technologies, um, and is it is it due to you know some particular applications or, or perhaps scale? Uh, I'm sorry, the development, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what, what, yeah, can you yeah, just, if you don't mind me just attempting to, to recast the question, I guess, how, how should we think about FS and apologies if I've screwed the pronunciation up, um, versus other FS options that you know may predate it, and you know, if, if there are some fundamental limitations that couldn't be adapted for the use cases. Um, you know, wh why a net new option versus adaptation of other things? And it's not meant to be a criticism. I'm just trying to understand and form a mental model around what is what differentiates this versus other things that could potentially be adapted to provide a similar capability. Uh, well. Uh, actually, uh, the main advantage uh, of uh, TrueBFS uh, comparing to other uh, distributed uh, storage is that uh, it can support a small files um, very well, uh, both in capacity and uh, performance wise. Uh, it, uh, uh, I think, uh, I mean, uh, it's very hard for distributed storage to support uh, a small files. So this is a big uh, advantage. Uh, also, uh, for for large files, uh, well, I think uh, uh, everyone has the uh, similar performance uh, regarding large files. But for small files, uh, Drupal FS is uh, highly scalable and uh, is optimized for, uh, specifically for uh, small files. Uh, but of course, there are some scenarios that uh, TrueFS cannot uh, support, uh, which is, um, I think it's the my circle, uh, my circle, my circle directly using uh, TrueFS. Uh, this scenario uh, cannot be supported um, right now. Uh, but for uh, my circle uh, history table, which requires a lot of uh, read. A request, but not a write request. Uh, TrueBS can support that uh, using scenario. Okay, so um, I, I mean, what what I mean is, uh, for most using uh, use cases, uh, TrueBS can support, but there's uh, certainly some um, database uh, scenario that cannot be, and that's what we are going to cover uh, in the next. Uh, development uh, phase. Uh, does that uh, answer our question? Um, I, I think it gives me some some sort of direction on uh, and better understanding it. I'll, I'll have to pour through your docs a little bit better, but uh, I appreciate it. I think Ardalan had a sort of follow on question, maybe in the same vein. 
Yeah, so basically how much of the performance improvements are due to relaxing the process requirements and client-side caching for small files? Uh, actually, we have a, a performance uh, a stats uh, in the paper uh, comparing to CFFS. And uh, well, I, I, I didn't uh, bring some, uh, some of the, uh, the graph here. Uh, but uh, they are in, in the paper and uh, you can find it uh, on our GitHub. Uh, Sounds yeah, good. Yeah, I'll check out the Sigma paper later. Thank you. Uh -huh. yeah, uh, shall I go on? Sorry, just uh -huh. one, one more mm -hmm. question. So uh, you mentioned that the database cannot be supported or like MySQL cannot be supported. What's exactly is the reason? Because of uh, large amount of write or something else? Or the because, locking or? Uh, actually, uh, MySQL, uh, MySQL's uh, write pattern is uh, direct IO, uh, especially for uh, InnoDB uh, storage engine. Uh, InnoDB storage engine uses uh, direct IO as a uh, uh, as a is right pattern um, for direct IO. There's uh, really nothing a file system can do because uh, the semantics uh, requires the IO to be sent to the server. So there's uh, well actually there's no um, how to say uh, no no room for the file system to do optimizations. Uh, for direct IO that uh, a requ a write request. So uh, what we want to uh, do to uh, support uh, direct IO is um, we need to uh, reduce uh, IO latency, uh, which requires uh, um, a DPDK or a RDMA to uh, reduce uh, the uh, network latency. Um, but that requires a hardware support. So, I mean, uh, my, my circle right pattern uses a direct IO, uh, which yeah, okay. has no room Thank for you. Yeah. cell system. Um, 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 yeah, that's basically a perform performance issue, right? So because they are using direct IO, they are asking the file to be persistent. So become yeah. crash persistent, right? So yeah. uh, I, um, based on your current design, can you just like simply send the content to the backend and the persistent there? Because you already have, still have a distributed file system. It's just like performance, it's not that good, but uh, in theory, if you bypass your cache layer, you still can able to do it, or for some reasons it's, um, it's, uh, it's not desirable. Uh, yeah, well, we are trying to uh, to cover this uh, using scenario. Um, well, I mean, uh, direct IO uh, semantics requires the IO to be sent to the uh, server. But uh, uh, so, uh, if we can uh, reduce the network network uh, latency uh, between client and server, then uh, we may be uh, able to uh, support this scenario. Okay, thank you. You could move the app. I don't know if you guys support hyper convergence, but if you, if you could move the app to the cluster that runs the file system, then the app will be on the same node and you could reduce it, right? And I don't know if you support that or not. Uh, actually, we have a strategy to uh, select the data nodes. And if uh, there is a, a strategy that if a client's, uh, if the data nodes, uh, the available data nodes uh, has, uh, are on the same uh, computer node of client, then it will choose uh, this data node uh, with high priority. Excellent. Yeah, we will have such Great. a strategy. Yeah. So well, in fact, that's but, but if they're sharding individual files, 
co-locating data and compute may not mean much because the data is sharded. If a file is sharded across different data nodes. Yeah, they may, if, if you, you lose choose the same node yeah. and then you, you don't shard, uh, then you- then If you lost your node. No, 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 I'm not saying don't replicate. I'm saying don't shard. Uh, then you, your recache can, can really benefit from that. But anyway, that's a discussion for another day. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, you're all welcome to uh, discuss uh, technical details uh, offline and uh, to, to, to uh, issue, to, to pr propose some issues uh, on our GitHub. Yeah, uh, you're all very, very, very welcome. Okay, uh, so here's the future plan. Uh, I'm going to uh, cover this uh, cover these plans from a community perspective and a technical perspective. Uh, for community perspective, uh, the objectives is, are to uh, attract more companies uh, contributing to uh, to the project, and we are going to make it easy and uh, stable to use. Uh, difficulties are uh, that, uh, as I mentioned, um, such a storage project has a high barrier to uh, contribute key, uh, key commits. Uh, so uh, what we are going to do is that uh, uh, we are going to open some uh, a series of uh, technical lectures um, to uh, which can uh, do some uh, source code analysis uh, for someone to uh, be able to familiar with TrueFS uh, more quickly. And uh, we are uh, going to, pro we, we can also provide internships for uh, college students. Um, and this is what we are going to do in this summer. And also we can uh, develop tools to uh, simplify uh, deployments and uh, cluster operations. And for technical um, plan, um, we, are, we are planning to integrate with uh, CNCF uh, ecosystem uh, uh, since we already have a uh, TrueBiFS CSI and uh, TrueBiFS Helm and uh, the monitor subsystem is uh, uh, it is highly reliable on um, promises, and we are going to uh, integrate with Rook, uh, and this is under progress. Well, actually, we have pro uh, proposed a pro request uh, to the Rook uh, community, and uh, we are waiting for the feedback. Mm, and also, uh, as you can see, we are trying to uh, integrate with a uh, big data ecosystem as well. Uh, for example, uh, use TrueBFS as backend storage for data lake and uh, develop remote Spark Shuffle service plugin. And we are also going to, uh, the next uh, biggest feature is a cross zone optimizations uh, to improve uh, robustness. Okay, uh, so that's it for today's presentation. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, um, Sharon. Um, I would, um, I would just like to ask a couple of questions around um, how somebody would. If, if somebody wanted to run this in production today, um, are there, you know, un, un, until sort of the rook changes are are committed, how how would somebody sort of deploy and 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 manage this across sort of um, a number of uh, a number of nodes or a number of servers? What, what's what's the what's the sort of current um, Best practice. Uh, 
Well, actually, uh, there is no uh, hardware uh, limit uh, to deploy uh, to BFS. Uh, for best, best practice, I think um, I can give some uh, suggestions, uh, which is a resource manager can be deployed uh, separately and a meta node and a data node uh, can be uh, deployed uh, hybridly. Uh, because a meta node uh, consumes much of the uh, memory resource and the data node consumes the storage uh, resource of a, uh, a single node. So they can be deployed uh, hybridly. And uh, for- uh, No, I, I, I understood, but, but I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, is, is there some sort of process to, to sort of automate that deployment and, and perhaps, you know, a, a, a cluster, you know, like a, for example, in, in a Kubernetes cluster or, or orchestrated in, in, in some sort of way, or, or is this um, something that you install on a sort of server by server basis? Uh, well, actually a TripFS can be served as an on-premise storage uh, for Kubernetes platform. Uh, but if you are planning to uh, deploy a uh, TrueBoFS in uh, an orchestrated uh, uh, by Kubernetes, uh, I think um, first of all, data node can uh, and the meta node cannot be uh, migrated uh, from uh, different uh, be between different nodes. Uh, does that answer your question? I mean, um, no, I, I I think I understand I, I understand the concept of the of the data node and the and the meta partition. I, I I guess what I'm what I'm trying to understand is, you know, what in in the typical use cases where, you know, JT or Oppo or, or some of the other companies that are um, using it in production are, are are these typically deployed therefore on. Um, you know, some sort of bare metal nodes or 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 uh, VMs or something, but but is it is it under, you know, some sort of config management or 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 is it actually deployed uh, perhaps as a container or orchestrated in some way? Well, uh, most of the cluster are, are deployed uh, on bare metal uh, nodes, and uh, can uh, it is served as an on-premise uh, storage platform for the applications uh, running in Kubernetes cluster. Right. Okay. So there's, uh, there's, 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 I guess that means there's, there's quite a barrier to entry to, to deploy this in, in, in production because the, the deployment and the operational aspect of this is, is, is going to need is going to require some work um mm -hmm. i imagine yeah. yeah uh but uh as we have a true fs helm uh, it can also be uh actually it can be uh deployed uh and orchestrated by kubernetes cluster um but uh, i don't think uh, uh they, they, they are used uh, in real production, but uh, we, we have the uh, Truvivus Helm, which can uh, deploy uh, Truvivus in Kubernetes class. All right, okay, that helps. Were there um, any other final questions for, for Sharan? Okay. Um, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Sharon, and and uh, all the team, all the project team. Um, this was a, a, a great presentation. I think we all we all learned a lot about uh, Chihuahua Fest.
Um, we we also had another agenda item to go with uh, Raffaele to um, discuss uh, the cloud native DR, but I, I think given that we only have um, a few minutes left to the hour, um, I'm going to propose that we um, that we uh, move that to the next call. Uh, hopefully that's okay with you, Raffaele. Yeah, it's okay. That's perfect. I also learned a lot from this presentation, so thank you, Sharon. Indeed. Thanks, everyone. Well, in that case, um, we'll give everybody a few minutes back um, and we'll, we'll close the call a little early, um, unless there is um, uh, any other uh, things that anybody else wants to raise. I think we're good. All right, thank you again, uh, Sharon and the project team, um, and look forward to seeing you in the in the next call. Have a good rest of your day and good or good evening, <laughs> depending where you are. Thanks. Uh, have a nice day. Okay. Thanks, Sharon. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, bye bye. Bye guys.